Do you know that there are secret Zonai devices in this game that'll let you build things that you normally wouldn't be able to build? I was able to build this tank out of complete metal. It's actually made of metal. So this tank is literally invincible. So I can have a gigantic, enormous tank with cannons on the front and nobody could ever kill me. And that's not all. There's other pieces too. There's unique upgraded pieces. There are building pieces that you literally can't get any other way. And I'm gonna show you how to get these pieces. Before we start on this one, I do want to give credit where credit is due, though. I actually found this originally on a very small YouTube called Ape Night Gaming. And I will link his YouTube down below and the original video below. So go check him out. Give him a sub. I'm sure that would help him out a ton as if someone who literally has like almost no subs. So to get these secret parts, what we're going to have to do is go to the depths. Now, the first one that I'm going to show you is going to be up here. So go to the Typhlo Ruin Skyview Tower and then fly over to this hole and dive into that hole. That'll take you to the depths. Now, if you want to get a light ray, you can go ahead and get this one. This will be the nearest one to this. But we're going to go to this camp right here. And at this camp, we'll be able to find some really interesting parts that you won't find elsewhere, other than a few other camps in the underground. So at these camps, you'll be able to find these weird vehicles that you won't see elsewhere. And sometimes you'll even find parts laying around that you won't find anywhere else in the game. So for example, this one has these square metal pieces and rectangular metal pieces on this wall. But we can't pull these pieces apart. So if I grab this and shake it, it won't come apart. It's stuck like that. So what we have to do is a special trick in order to get these usable for our everyday building. Now when you first come here, there'll be a guy inside of this thing. And you'll have to kill him in order to get this uh, freed up. But afterwards, you'll have this. And this is the same kind of thing where there's some parts you've seen before, but some parts you've never seen. Like, what is this? You see this? This is not a normal part. This is not a normal building material. You won't be able to see this anywhere else. But the problem is we can't detach it to build things with it. But we can. There's actually a trick we can do in order to build with these things. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Zonai devices and grab literally anything. I'm going to grab a fan. And then all I have to do is attach a fan somewhere to it. Then after that, if you have auto build, which by the way, if you don't have auto build, uh, you can get auto build by dropping into this hole right here on the ground south of central Hyrule. And then that will take you right here. And then you can head over here to get to the great abandoned central mine where you can do a quest there in order to get auto build. Well, anyway, once you have auto build, now that we attach something to it, it'll put it in our recent history. So now we can go ahead and place it. We can even take our fan off to save a little bit of zonite. So in this one's case, this one's really expensive. So this one's going to cost 30 zonite. But it's worth it because what we do now is once we build it on our own, now we can take parts off. So we can take this part off. Uh, we take the wheel off. Uh, I don't know that I actually want to take all the wheels off though. I kind of like the wheels on. I'll probably have to put a new one on. Um, but we could take off this thing up here if we don't want it. We can take all the pieces off one by one. I especially don't want these lights. That's an extra six zonite every time I summon it just to have lights. Uh, so we take all that off. And every time we make a change, it's going to be in our auto build history now. Uh, every time we add on a piece, actually. So when we remove it, it won't do anything. But So once I have this the way I want, I'm going to put that tire back on, actually. Let me put a tire out here. Uh, so once we get this the way that we want, then what we'll do is we'll stick something on. So let me get that out of the way. Pop the wheel back on. And then uh, that alone should do. I don't even need to put the fan on now. So go to auto build. And there it is. So now we have this. And now we can summon it for 18 zonite instead of 30. And we have this weird foundation that you otherwise won't be able to work with. This entire middle thing right here is one piece. The ramps, the thing, the, all the, it's only three zonite to summon that. I could take off everything else. And I could favorite just this piece with one thing attached to it. I'd be six zonite then every time I summon it. So then that lets you create some vehicles that are very interesting. And what's more interesting is some of these parts we find down here. A lot of the parts we find down here are actually made of metal. So unlike the uh, wooden tanks that we've built before in this channel, those ones will burn. These ones are actually literally invincible. Nothing can break them other than brute force. If they get hit hard enough by something, they can uh, pieces can break off. But they have to get hit really hard to do that. So otherwise, without this, our options are kind of weird because normally what we'd have to do is we'd have to build tanks using sleds and carts. But the problem with that is it always leaves us with tanks that are very, very tiny. Very, very small tanks. 
And if you want to have a tank that actually is really cool or a customized unique one like this, then you can get these parts and you can build with it. Unique parts don't end there though. There's other camps. So there's this camp right here and I'm sure there's others like it down here in the depths. This one is just, it's really actually kind of annoying to get to. I'm sure there's better ones that you can find. They'll have this exact same one. But this is the only one I found so far that has this thing. So this is the exact same kind of setup. So what we'll do is we'll take a Zonai device, like a fan. We'll attach it to it. And then we'll auto build our own version. Like this. And you'll be able to see for this thing, it has a really unique center part. So we can take all this off. We can take these lights off. And we take this wheel off. We're gonna leave the fan or else it'll... Or maybe we don't leave the fan. Oh, no, it's still a steering stick. We move the last piece, it'll blow up. Okay, we have this. So we can build with this any way we want. I mean, you can use your creativity imagination for this, but this thing would be really good for either a motorcycle or um, a three-wheeler, basically. So you could use this thing any which way you want. It has these spikes on here that will do damage to people when they touch them. Very unique building material that you can work with. So just do that, and then take one Zonai device, attach it to it, and now we can summon that part for nine Zonite whenever we want to. So that's another crazy one that you can get. Again, that's right there on the map, and you can build some really interesting things with that one as well. Another interesting part can be found at this camp right here, and I know, I know I've seen in other ones too. You can find these hover things, and so we can um, turn it off by shooting it. And then it'll fall down and we can go down and take a look at it. it's kind of dark here let me um shoot some seeds for us there we go so this one's really interesting i broke the head off i don't think it's supposed to be in there like that um this one is its own metal box these pieces cannot be pulled off if i take this one and i do the trick like before this whole thing is one thing the steering wheel and the hover stones are separate but everything else all these metal pieces are one unit so you can get a square metal box with this on the back and replicate that anytime that you want. This place also has these uh, spike things as a standalone that you can just access and stick on things. These things will hurt people when they when they touch them, which is great for ramming people. And then you also have a bunch of these, which are really interesting. So what makes these really interesting is you can stick them on like this and then pull them off. But you can't, like, obviously, I gotta do the same thing to these as I do to everything else. I gotta attach something to it, and then, you know, so I'm actually gonna do that right now, because I'm gonna need these. So I would take a Zonai device, like a fan, and I would attach it to it, and now it's in my history. And now I can access it. And when I rebuild it like that, then I can pull these pieces off. And what's nice about these is they can fill the gaps on these squares. So I can get two of them, put one there and one there, and then I can close the front of a tank. With these metal pieces so we can do that in order to enclose the tank or to replicate this thing right here if we build a different you know shape of tank stuff like that so that's another one that's really good so you can go here and get this one as well and then you can build some really cool stuff so now that you know how to get the pieces let me show you how to assemble that tank that we made in the beginning out of complete metal a metal tank that's actually invincible and we're going to use it to kill a hinox although for the actual super bosses like real true bosses in this game you got to be careful getting too close to them because if you get too close to them then they will um, despawn it. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our fuse or auto build. And we're gonna look through our history and try to find some of these pieces. So what we're gonna have to use are gonna be the long metal pieces, which we'll have, I think right here are the ones I want. So it's gonna be nine each to summon these, unfortunately, but that's how it's gonna be to build a super tank. And once we build it once, then we'll only, we won't have to uh, spend all the extra uh, zonite every time. It's just that the only way to summon these is to have just three things attached to it because you have to have one on in order for it to not disappear and you have to be, add something get it in the history instead of removing so we got to do this so we'll need four of these now before we put it on put them together we can at least take off one of these pieces but we got to leave one other piece or else it'll disappear so we'll take off all these sleds then we can grab it and we can start using it now here you got to be extremely careful if you place it wrong you cannot replace it because when you go to take it off, um, it will pull it off from everything, which will make it disappear. So you want to try to get it exactly how you want it uh, when you do it. And that's going to be a little tricky. So be ready to get a little frustrated with this part. So we're going to take this piece now. And these side pieces are a little bit easier. So we can kind of just see based on this. Like we can just get lined up like this and then see based off one corner. 
where it's gonna go and then get it like that hopefully that was right yep that was right and now for another piece of trick for this last piece is to flip this thing on its side and that'll allow us to do the same thing again we can just um pull this in and then we can try to just look at one side although this one we want it's a little bit trickier because we want it to be up a little bit okay hopefully that was right all right that was good now that they're all together, we can go ahead and pull this piece off and all these middle pieces. And now we have a metal frame for our tank. This thing's actual metal, so nothing can actually destroy this other than brute force. Now we've got a weird little spot in the bottom where it's not connected, and that's just kind of how it's going to be. Um, I kind of aligned that a little weird, I guess, but you know what? I don't want to have to pull off and put a new one on. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is we're gonna wanna put the wheels on and put the front on. So let's say this is the front. Let's put the front on it. So those pieces I talked about earlier, we're gonna use them now. So we need to go through here and we gotta find that piece right here. These are the pieces we need. So I'm gonna need two of these because they disappear when I pull them apart. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually take the fan off because this is actually two pieces. And then we can take this and we can put it over to here. Although I'm really scared to do this on uneven ground because I don't want it to twist sideways and I'll lose nine zonite if that happens. So try to find some ground that'll actually level it out a little bit so you can get it more consistent. And be very aware of those spots that it shows where it's going to attach to because you do not want it attaching wrong. So we're going to try to line it up like this. Okay, we got it. So now we can grab this and pull that off. Now we can do this other one. We can pull the fan off and grab this. And then we can try to do the same thing over here. And you definitely want the front to be covered like this in case you're going to be using cannons or something like that. So we, right now it wants to connect weird on the bottom. We don't want that. We want it. There we go. Okay. You can see the bottom the little dots. They're both on top of each other. We got in the right spot. That should go into place good enough. And we can pull that off. And now we have the frame for the tank. It looks a little asymmetrical. On yours, if you want to take the time in the zone, I can save and load your game a bunch of times, and, you know, you can get it right. Okay, so now we've got this. So now what we're going to do is put the wheels on it. So let's... Oh, man, that part in the bottom looks... That part in the top looks really bad, though. Wow. I definitely... You definitely want to fix that on your playthrough if, if you feel like it. All right, let's try to keep this back on even ground. Now we're going to need the wheels. Now, for a tank, I usually recommend that you use the big wheels. They're slower, but you really don't want to get flipped over while in the tank. Uh, the tank's more about just sitting somewhere and letting your, like letting the tank just slowly kill everybody. So this is upside down right now, so we're going to want um, to make sure these arrows are facing the correct way. So this is the correct way. It's really confusing to do this upside down, but that should be the correct way. And then take these. And that should be right. Now, if you're not sure if it's right or not, what you can do is just flip it back real fast and then see. And you see the arrows are facing the correct way. It looks good to me. Okay. Now put that back down and we'll grab the next wheels. And then we want them to be the same direction as these other ones. So not like that, but like that. And we'll go ahead and put them up there. And then let's see this one. Try to get it that same direction. Okay, we got the same direction. And attach it right there. Okay, so now we have a car. A tank car. But we're not quite done yet. So we're going to need to make the thing on the top. So for this, the fancy one, we're going to take a sled and a construct head and a cannon. Now you can put a ton of cannons on. I just happen to only have one cannon. And I may make an upgraded version of this before the end of the video just to show you what it's like with a ton of cannons. But I got to go buy them real fast with Zonite. Uh, zone I charges. So I usually like to have it more towards the front and we can climb up to make sure it's symmetrical. Okay, it looks close to symmetrical. I'm just going to leave it. It's fine. Then what we can do is take the sled. Um, I got to get that cannon off of it. It's weighing it down. Okay, we take the sled and I'm just going to set it up there for now and then climb up there so I can actually see what I'm doing. This thing is so big that it's like so far off the ground. So we're going to rotate it like this and then try to get it centered on that like that okay now we can grab the cannon 
And we can put the cannon on the front of the sled. Like that. Okay. So all that's done. Now the last thing to do is on the back. We're going to do auto build. Hopefully it's still in my history. Let's see. Because uh, I've put so many parts down now. Um, I need specifically that this thing. I need that thing where two of them put together again. We I mean, take that wheel off or fan off. And I just need to cover the back. Now, you can cover the back any way that you want to do it. Whichever way you think looks best for your tank. Or compromise between being defensible and um, actually looking good. It's up to you. But we just want to get this up here. And man, it does not want to attach the way I want to attach it. I want to attach it from the top joint, but maybe the side joint will be fine. I, I don't know. And that looks terrible, but whatever. I really want to touch it. It's really hard. But either way, I just wanted to get it so that way there's a little bit of cover from behind. So it's harder for like enemies to just walk in here. So then we just need one more thing. We just got to get a steering stick. And then put that inside of here. And now we have a tank. And the tank is completely invincible other than an enemy running in from behind. I have some cracks in the tank right now, which is not good. So it's like technically maybe I could die somehow, but... Uh, very unlikely. So now what we can do is we can go over to an enemy and just get close enough to fire and then just kind of keep tapping backwards to like walk backwards. Uh, or just, uh, drive backwards and that'll let us stand still. And a funny thing is a lot of enemies won't even know how to aggro correctly sometimes because they can't see you. So he's going to throw rocks and we're going to see here how we're literally invincible. <laughs> That's funny though. It makes the sled bounce. So if I let him get too close, he can uh, despawn the tank. So I really don't want him to get close. So I got to be ready to back up at any time. And something you can do to make your tank even crazier, if you don't know about this, is in this game, there's these items you can get from Flux Construct 3s. And they're called Large Zone Eye Charges. And if you use one, it fully restores your charge. And it makes you temporarily unable to lose charge. Which is why it would have been nice if I had put more cannons on. Because then I can use a Zone Eye Charge and do a lot more. After this, we'll see about trying to kill the Flame Gleok and see what happens. He'll probably despawn the tank, but I'll put a bunch more cannons on and make a better tank. And then we'll just try to kill the Flame Gleok. Now, I chose the wrong way to go for this guy because I don't know if I can get underneath this tunnel right here because this tank is so big uh, that I may be forced to try to find another way. Actually, you know what? We can. We're going for it. We're going to give him the old bait and switch and drive around him. This guy's a really hard one to fight because he's in such a narrow space. But it's working out just fine. Tanks are totally overpowered. And there he goes. So he knocks. Easy can be. Easy can be. A simple boss. Uh, especially with large zone eye charges and a lot of batteries. But really, it would have been better to use a large zone eye charge and have a ton of batteries. So once you're done, you can just get off and just get outside and go and loot whatever it is that you killed and then, you know, continue on with your journey. So let's go ahead and try. I'm going to try upgrading this with more cannons. And also we're going to see if we can fight the flame Gleok, even though he's on a tiny little bridge. Also, do not forget, once you've got it built how you want it, go to your auto build and then favorite it. I'm going to have to get rid of a favorite in order to favorite it, but you're going to go in here and you're going to favorite this thing that you made in your history so that way you can just respawn it whenever you want so definitely definitely do that so now i'm on the bridge with the flame gliok and i'm going to attempt to use this it's going to go very poorly i bet but we'll see i'm going to upgrade this thing though because we're going to need a lot more cannons we're going to want to kill them so it's 45 to resummon this thing so now in order to add cannons we got to count the parts so it would have been better to use that little tiny square box that we got so we had that one square box because it was one single part it would have been, we could have made the same thing and saved three parts, which could have let us put more cannons on. It was um, this thing right here, I think. Yeah, this thing right here. Uh, if we were to use that, it would have saved us a ton of parts. But oh well. So let's count. We got one, two, three. Let's see, we got four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight plus these wheels, 12 total. And then 13, 14, 15. So we can only put on five or six more cannons. I'm just going to put five to be safe because it'll start despawning things if we get too many. Um, if we had used the other one, we could have put a total of like 11 cannons or something, which would have been way smarter, but it is what it is. So we'll just take out five more cannons. 
And we're going to attach them in a grid pattern to the current cannon. So take one and put one on top. Okay, that was way too far back. I don't know that it matters. It's just nice to have it look symmetrical, you know? There we go. Okay, we'll take another cannon now. And we'll put it on the right or the left. And it, is, it is so hard to line these things up. My goodness. Well, at least from that distance. It's so far away. Sure. Okay, there we go. Take this one. Let's just do it at an angle from the start. It's easier to see from an angle. Okay, good enough. See if it, attach it to the sled or the cannon. Either one's fine. All right, looking good. So we're gonna have six cannons total. Okay. Now this is gonna end horribly, I guarantee it. I better save so I'll have this in my auto build history. All right, let's give it a shot and see how this goes. I mean, main thing is that's the worst part about this guy is just that there's no maneuverability on a tiny little bridge. If I was out in the open, I would have no fear of this at all. But my only hope here is to run around in a circle on him, but we'll see what happens. My only fear is him despawning this thing. If he gets too close, he'll despawn it. We're actually doing a lot of damage to him, though, with these cannons. If only we had 11 of them. So since this thing's made of metal, um, he can't really do much, but wow, I don't know what he, what just happened, but... Oh, I think he made our, our cannon... Oh, we have to be careful. If he fires the laser beam onto a cannon as it's firing, the, the cannon will explode point blank. Okay, so he's kind of closing in on us. I don't really like this. Okay, we ran out of battery, so I'm going to have to use a large Zonai charge. But we do have to be careful again, because if he's firing on the cannons when they fire, oh, he can despawn it from that far. Okay, well, there we go. The flame Cleox not going to happen. You can apparently despawn it from like 50 feet, like 50 to 100 feet away. But either way, you can try it on any boss that you want to try it on. That thing's really OP if you can keep him from despawning it. So that was, it was fun while it lasted though. Well, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe for more Zelda content. Now you know where to get all those secret building parts so you can make specialized devices, specialized tanks, special structures and uh, crafts and builds in general in the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom.